right, everybody, carrying or which which channel am I on? <laughs> I have my websites. I have this channel, Conscious of Economics and Urban Farm Project, and I help manage the Think Collaborative YouTube channel. <laughs> which hasn't gotten very much attention, but we're gonna start putting some new stuff up on there. Uh, starting Sunday, Monday. Also, Caring Stones and Digging Holes radio show, and then I've got Caring Stones and Digging Holes. Um, I'm segueing into um, Caring Stones and Digging Holes classes and having other people on. So I'm going from Caring Stones and Digging Holes radio show just audio to interviewing people to actually video records of different kinds of um you know most of the people i have on my show are educators you know they um have a lot of information and documents and knowledge so i'm gonna segue into that once a week show um class so i forget you know, I forget kind of what channel I'm on. <laughs> so I'm on the Consciousness of Economics and Urban Farm Project channel. All right, so, um, yeah, so it's Friday and I wanna do an addition video to the trance video I did yesterday. It took five hours to upload it, it was like, Crazy. So, what happens when you're kind of? No, we're not barking. No, that's no. We're not. We're not. Yeah. Shh. So, what happens when you know you're you're put into this trance? You live your life in this trance, and all this stuff that was like programmed into you for like the first you know seven years of your life, behavior, thoughts, visual. Um, responses you know watching everything and downloading that sounds experiences um, programming repetitive you know uh, repetitive states and what does that do for you over a long period of time of of continuing adding those repetitive sounds and and programming and behaviors you know for example working at the same company for 35 years at the same desk driving to the same place um, you know all the other programming you know be family behavior you know like five generations of alcoholism um, you know and it, it goes along across everything you know so what does that look like when you become, you know, 40, 50, or 60? Well, what it looks like is you end up running these programs because you're not conscious, you're not paying attention to everything that's going on around you, and you can't recall what's, what's moment to moment. That tells you pretty much that you are under trance and programming, right? So you just zombie eyes through your life because you've already been programmed to do all the things in your world because it's the same all the time. It's repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. Trance-like state. Yesterday I talked about movement, you know, behavior, sound, a lot of these things, repetitive, 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 you know, um, cause trance-like states. And we have so many levels of it from, you know, every walk of our life even grocery stores, right? The type of music they play at certain types of the day for key marketing and, and product sales. Seeing things on TV, you know, different commercials with different products, product placement, placement, placement. So when you go to the store, you end up buying the one you see the most, right? So that's trance state, that's unconscious um, trance hypnotic state living all right so we have this guy who thinks i must be sexy which i'm just kind of shocked by but he's um 
turned up the music in his, you know, cool car. And um, he probably could be my grandfather. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Programming, right? He's doing his uh, predictive um, predatorial male behavior. Look at me over here with my car and my stereo and yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's no different than, you know, animal predatory behavior. Gorilla. Whoa! <laughs> Trance like states. Oh, and this will crack you up. He's being cool in his car, which is, you know, it's all right, car. But the part that's really hysterical about the whole thing is that the back window has been broken out and he has a tarp over it. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, predictive programming, right? Um, yeah. I'll, predictive programming, mind control, trance states, hypnosis. It's all the same. So, um, what does it look like when you become, you know, 40, 50, 60? You know, even Ryan and I have talked about it, and he's thought about it in his own life at 30. That he lives in his own, you know, hell. Not his self-generated hell, but all the things that are playing in his records, you know, in the back of his mind that have created his reality and what he's living in. And mostly all the stuff that, you know, you're afraid of or that bother you the most or um, the things you shouldn't be, you know, the programming that, you know... Um, tries to put you in, you know, what it wants you to be, which is, you know, totally asleep, not paying any attention, um, drugged or checked out, and, you know, completely 100% unconscious, just kind of going through, you know, life. So I have a friend of mine, and he's like 70, and, you know, he keeps having these crazy problems you know he's dealing with a lot of anger from his life and you know a lot of things that he's been through and even though he looks like he's really conscious he's like in common law and just like a lot of other stuff in his life but he keeps um his house is like his you know is bug infested his unit, it's not a house, it's like a condo. And it's like bug infested. I mean, even in the winter time, you've got like mosquitoes, um, you know, all kinds of little ants, uh, cockroaches, you know, bed bugs, these other weird little, you know, biting flies. And so, you know, I was asking around in the building, you know, to other people, like, um, do you have bugs? And people are like, what do you mean, do I have bugs? I'm like, do you have bugs? And they're like, no, don't have bugs. So I'm asking people on the first floor, the second floor, the third floor, just in general, if I come across people, I'll ask them about, you know, what's going on with the bugs. And what's really interesting or ironic is that Everyone else that I've like come in contact with in the building, you know, has no bugs. And so they're can totally confused about me asking about bugs and that how this person's unit is like, you know, pretty much on a daily basis is overtaken by some kind of bugs. And it's really interesting because this whole, you know, he does not like bugs. Bugs are one of the biggest things I think his programming, you know, because he grew up poor, but there's a difference between poor and filth. And I think in his programming, filth is bugs. And so it really bothers him because, you know, filth is a bad thing, right? Cleanliness is next to godliness, you know. Um, and so there's a big difference between, you know, poor and filth. And I, so, so I think he has this like backdoor programming, but what's interesting is he's created his own hell on earth. 
because the records that are playing in his mind that he's never really paid attention to, all the programming that he's had over the course of his life, is actually creating the environment that he is physically living in. And so the last two years, I've been really looking at people, their lives, you know, what their house looks like, what their lives look like, what they look like, what they spend a lot of time, you know, doing, you know, and even to the point looking at how they rebel, they think they're rebelling, but they're still playing in to the, you know, patternized, um, you know, predictive programming, um, trance-like hypnotic unconscious state. Um, so, and, you know, it's just really interesting to watch how this goes. So, number one, you know, look at your life and look at all the things in your life that uh, you don't like. You know, every time you come up with a new one, put it on a list so that you can recognize the things you don't like. Because a lot of this programming and trance and this repetitive pattern, you know, um, educational behavior doesn't really always have a vocabulary. And so when you're trying to do this work, you just sometimes cannot pinpoint at all uh, where to look, where to find it. Um, you know, look at your life, you know, do you feel like you're living in some kind of hell or somebody else's hell or hell on earth? Um, and then, you know, pinpoint, you know, those kinds of ideas. Three, and most importantly, you know, how do you want to live? You know, sit down and think about, you know, your heaven on earth what would your heaven on earth be sometimes we never even think about um, you know what it is we do want and what we we want to have and I'm not talking about ego you know ego based because we're in a trance right so you know we also have these patterns and um, programming and all this other stuff that is about getting something for your ego. I want a big house with a swimming pool. I want, you know, a storage of gold bars. I want some bling bling. I want some diamonds. Um, I want to wear, you know, these pants and then this shirt. So I'm not talking about the ego generated I wants, which is another whole thing that you're going to have to dig through. Um, because, you know, we've kind of been lowered to kind of primitive animal behavior. Um, when you have this, you know, like in Steiner's work, you have animals and they have what's called a picture consciousness. And that's kind of like when we're pre-programmed and we're running these um, background, you know, um, Things, these records that have been programmed from, you know, repetitive patterning and um, repetitive behavioral modification and then all the stuff that's been stuck into your head. For example, one of the worst ones I had, and mind you, when I grew up, I hated Barbie and Ken. You know, I didn't really like dolls. You know, I was a tomboy, you know. I want to fish. And I grew up with, you know, men in my family that, you know, were, and women who, we were all hardcore outdoor people. We weren't indoor people. And, um, so I remember when I was like 23, I was living in, I think 22, 23, and I was living in Washington state. And this is when I first, you know, started working a year with the Lakota Sioux medicine woman. And so there was a lot of things changing. And she introduced me to a guy who was a professor, and I, I forget, I think he was a professor at Gonzaga University, but he had this, you know, altered li other life where he was kind of magical, and he was quite a bit older than me, um, and I didn't date him. It was just kind of a friend thing, but, you know, I think he was kind of put into my life as a mentor to try to help me dig through some of the programming and the deceptions and 
um, the things that were playing in my background, repetitive programming. And uh, I remember we used to go periodically to the bar and have some brews. And he'd bring tarot cards and whatever else. And I mean, mostly we would just have these really, you know, heightened, um, you know, conscious, uh, you know, dialogues. And I remember one time he looked at me and he said, you have like fairy tale syndrome. And I, you know, I was kind of shocked because I, I never really, you know, talked about relationships or having a relationship, you know, fairy tale syndrome and, you know, I guess ideal partnership or expectation of what that partnership would be. And I didn't really consider myself that because I never got married. I actually ran away from marriage, ran away from pretty much everybody in my past. I mean, I've been single and pretty much celibate for so long now. I, I can't even count all, yeah, all the, you know, I think I'm coming close to 20 years, maybe. It's hard to tell. But it's just, like, not on my radar anymore. And um, so one of the things he said was that, you know, did you ever stop to consider, like, you know, in the fairy tale version of your, you know, mind-controlled, you know, pattern system, which were books that were probably read to me, that, you know, I think every young girl gets, you know, dragged into, and then what they get is so far away from you know a fairy tale life it's like you guess what you're self-made hell on earth <laughs> yay so one of the things he said was that you know did you ever contemplate so once the knight comes on his white horse with his sword you know to save you the damsel in distress from somebody you know putting a curse on you a hypnotic you know whatever has caused um your particular um you know thing that needs to cause rescue um you know what happens when you get rescued number one you don't know who this person is uh, number two, you don't know where he's come from. Number three, you don't know his medical history. You don't know his mental history. You don't know his history. You don't know his family history. But, you know, he rides in to save you on a horse with a sword. You don't know if he's a pedophile, a murderer, a liar, a con artist. You don't, you don't know anything about this person so what would make you get into their car what would make you get onto their horse and go anywhere with this person and you know you know I've thought about that for years and years and years and it's like because what we're told these mind control you know mythical fairy tales these stories unlike native people's stories Native people's stories have, like, truthism in it. Like, you know, you don't want to deal with this kind of a trickster because this is what you're going to get from that kind of a trickster. Or, you know, they have stories that are based on oral history of experiences and information, you know, that's been gleaned, that can be passed down. So a person doesn't have to reinvent the wheel of their life. There'll be these moments where you'll have this recognition of like oh yeah I've been told stories about this kind of person and I know exactly what to do which is to turn around and run unlike you know white stories where you know the woman's dumb and you know somebody's always doing something to her and she's a damsel in distress she can't actually manage her own life she can't think she keeps biting the poisonous apple and going to sleep and so she can't think she doesn't work she doesn't have a job she's not educated she has nothing no money and then you know so she has to wait and wait and that's another you know the alchemist that story I mean it's one of Paulo Cujalo's most famous books and I've read mostly all of his books and some are fiction and some are nonfiction. Some are based on real spiritual events that he's undergone and gone through. 
But I hate The Alchemist. Out of all those books, I hate that one the most because the man has to go on this douchebag journey in order to find himself while the woman waits around forever for the douchebag to figure it out. You know, so he can align himself, you know, clear his self or whatever else. Bottom line is neither one of them should be engaged in any kind of like expectation of any kind of relationship. Yeah, and here we go again, a disempowering story of women who, you know, have to wait around for the prince, you know, some guy you don't even know that's a creepy weirdo. And then, you know, so what do we do when we're when we're single and we have children oh we just let any man into the house to because you know we're a damsel in distress and we need to be saved and and then you know we expose our children to these people or man could go the other way i mean you know so you know we're expecting to have these events like these stories because this is the programming that's running through our head which are never really been thought about you know, and when we do have these kinds of experiences, you know, we run away with it because, you know, we think, oh, it's the right and perfect thing. And then we find out later that, it, you know, it's a nightmare. It's hell on earth. It's a self-created hell on earth. Yeah. And the other thing, too, is, you know, ask yourself, how does the prince know where you're at with the white horse and the sword or the car? whatever else it's going to be how does he know where you're at and where to find you and you know and then when you get on the white horse and you ride off into the sunset well what's over there you know but these are things because we haven't been taught to think for ourselves we haven't been taught to critically think and because of the you know trance hypnotic states that we're continually being put in from every aspect of our life from day one you know we are just on autopilot creating this life and at the end of it no one's happy because you know what they lived a life that was predictably programmed because of it was embedded into you from all aspects of your life and i know this is not good news right i know it's not good news all right, well, that's it. I just wanted to do a second part to that. So it kind of helps people to kind of figure out where they're headed with their, you know, um, trance-like unconscious state and the hypnotic state that they're in. So anyway, that's all I've got for you. All right, thanks so much. Have a great day. Bridget Lindahl, Golf Conscious of Economics and Urban Farm Project. Bye.